Welcome to the Retired for Life YouTube channel. The video you're about to see is a prequel to a video I recently released called Starlink Temporary Install. Initially I wasn't going to publish this video but there is quite an interest in Starlink these days and the video does have some pertinent information in it about Starlink so I thought I will go ahead and publish it. So what you'll see in here is the preparations I made for clearing a spot for the Starlink satellite dish called Dishy and the use of the app which is a pretty important thing to have if you're thinking about getting a Starlink system get the app downloaded first and check out where you plan to install it. The other thing that might be of interest to a few people is an issue I came up with a chainsaw and what I did to resolve it. So I will include the link in the description to the original video and I hope you enjoy this video and if you did please leave a like and we'd love to also have you to subscribe to the channel. So thanks very much for watching and let's get on with the video. Hey guys welcome back. I got some very interesting news uh, in my email. I'll show you this email clip here. Yeah, that's a note from Starlink. I am going to be going on their uh, beta program to help test the new system. So it's just kind of recently got into Canada and they now have enough satellites up there to reasonably cover our area. So the, uh, the system is in the mail on its way here. Oh, I can't wait. So let's go have a look at the uh, potential spots for a test setup. Now this isn't a permanent setup. This is just a test to see if the system's gonna work properly out here. Uh, and if it does work well, then we'll move on to a more permanent location for the disc. So let's go have a look and see what we can find. So what we need is an area that hasn't got too many trees. So we've got some open sky. And as you've seen around here, there aren't too many areas like that. So I'm looking at a possible location over here. Now this spot right here where the snow is piling up was actually made for a satellite dish. And that was a long time ago when the dishes were huge, like six feet across. Uh, so it's long since gone, of course, but we might have enough clear sky here to make it work. So I've got Starlink's app here on my uh, iPad. So we're gonna start it up and see what we can see for clear skies. So the screen is kind of gray right now, but as I tip it up towards the sky, you can see kind of a clearer spot coming. So that signifies where the satellites need to have a clear sky. And this looks actually pretty promising. So these few trees here, <laughs> As I say, they're just junk softwood, so I won't lose any sleep over losing them. Uh, we'll cut them down pretty quick, get them out of the way, and I might have to cut down one of these over here. And we'll just use them for firewood. All right, so that gives us an idea. So I'll have to get the chainsaw out and the shovel, do a little bit of clearing here, and take down some of these trees just to get ready for when it shows up. Now the trees aren't gonna go to waste. They will get burned. Uh, and the parts that I can't burn will go through the chipper and that will go out on the trails to help keep the trails clear. So everything gets used, no waste. But for now, I think we need to get the barbecue going. I've got some steaks to cook. <laughs>
Okay guys, so today we're going to look at trying to take down some of those trees that are in the way for the new uh, Starlink satellite dish for when it gets here. So we'll get a bit of a jump on it. Not sure when it's going to get here. I've been trying to track it and it's come from California. It's made it as far as Tennessee, as far as I can tell from the tracking. And it's been sitting there for a few days. So we'll see what happens, but I've got a lot of work to do to get ready for it anyway. So it's been a little while since I've started the chainsaws. So I'm going to try and get the small one uh, running and use it hopefully to take down the trees. So let's see what we can do with it. So we've got gas and oil in it, at least enough to get it started. So uh, we'll give it a try and see if it'll start up. Well, I think we're going to be able to get it to run okay, so I'm going to check and fill the oil and the gas and make sure the chain is tight and that kind of stuff. And then we'll take it and head over towards those trees. Okay, we've had a little bit of a rest and I've got the uh, chainsaw adjusted so hopefully it'll work a little better this time. So we've got two or three more trees to take down and then if the chainsaw is running better I'll uh, probably do a little bit of limbing with it as well. So let's get the chainsaw down there and get back to cutting. Well, I think that's going to be it for today. I've still got one more over here that I want to take down. So I've got these down and I have started limbing to tidy it up. It is a bit of a mess down there, but because everything's in a gully like this, it makes it very difficult to deal with. I can't get to it with the tractor or the ATV. So I've pretty much got to cut everything down to a small enough length that I can get uh, a chain or a strap or something to it and then attach it to the tractor and pull it out. But uh, that's going to be a lot of work. But it's going very well. And I've got a nice big piece of sky opening up and that's what we want oh yeah so that'll be it for today we're out of gas again on the chainsaw and the chainsaw is running way better uh, I made a small adjustment to it which is a really tricky thing to make 
so let's go down to the shop and I'll show you that adjustment in case you get stuck uh, having a look at doing something like this. So the chainsaw I'm using is a little 16 inch pooling. The thing I like about this chainsaw is that it is reasonably light, uh, but it also means it's not hugely powerful. But keep the blade really, really sharp. And for the stuff that I'm cutting right now, which is softwood, it just cuts through it like butter. No trouble at all. So the other thing, guys, is stay safe. Helmet. Earmuffs, nice to have the, uh, the screen visor in the front. And the other thing I do all the time is wear my chainsaw chaps. They are hot and uncomfortable, especially in the summer. But man, don't take the chance. Be safe, live long and happy. <laughs> all right, let's take this apart and I'll show you that adjustment that uh, I was fighting with. So we're gonna take the top off here, and that is a, uh, I'm, I'm using a uh, number 20 by four quarks screwdriver to do this. You can use a standard screwdriver as well. Screws won't fall out, so you don't need to worry about that. So that's got the top piece out of the way. There's no wiring or anything there. And then to make the adjustment that I was doing, there are two screws down in these two holes. And that's a bit ridiculous. So the problem I was having was it was not getting enough power at higher revs. So you've got your low adjustment on this one and high adjustment on this one. And I'll see if I can show you what this looks like on the inside here, what the end of this adjustment screw looks like. Okay, there's the two spots. It's very difficult to see, but there are two screws down in there that have just kind of a knurled knob sort of end on them. Uh, it's not a screwdriver. It's not uh, a nut driver or anything like that. And that makes them pretty much impossible to get to especially if the cover is still on. So I'll show you what I did to get to these things. So to my way of thinking, this is just a bad design. So to get to it, what I did was I took the smallest nut driver that I had, which in this case is a 3 16 nut driver. Now that is actually too big. So when you put it over top of that screw, it just drops over top of it. Uh, and of course, of course it's a hex as well, which doesn't work. So to get a grip on it, I put a rag over the end and then inserted that down in there and pushed it down on top of that adjusting screw. And that worked very nicely. Then I could, turn that screw back and forth to make the adjustment. So all I had to do was adjust it about a half a turn on that screw. And now it works great at, at full throttle, at the higher revs and under load. I have no problem with it. It's running very well. It's just a little bit tricky to get to. So if you ever run into that issue, now you know how to get to it and they are going to go out of adjustment on occasion. And it just happens from the vibration because these things do vibrate something wicked. My hands are still a bit numb. So we'll put this back together and I'm gonna clean it all out, take this off, clean it up, 
get it ready for the, for the next day because I've got more lemming to do and another tree to cut. Take care of your equipment. It lasts so much longer that way. Uh, keep it clean, keep it well maintenanced, keep it oiled. Use the right oil. The other issue I've got today is I am almost out of my winter chainsaw oil. So I've got to go get some more. You need the right thickness of oil in there to do the right job lubricating the chain. All right, end of the lesson for today. I think it is time to go in. And today, I'm going to get a beer. So we've made pretty good progress. We got a uh, nice clear spot. One, maybe two more trees to drop. And then uh, I'll probably do a little more cleanup down there. Uh, and then probably leave it until the spring when I can get the ATV and the tractor and just to make it that much easier to clean up. Then I've got to get rid of the snow that's up, that's built up around that uh, ridge where I've been shooting from and get ready to build the platform. As once the uh, satellite dish is here, I believe they're calling it the dishy. I don't know. <laughs> SpaceX has a habit of using very strange names for a lot of things, but whatever. Once Dishy is here, I want to be able to set it up and get it running fairly quickly. So we'll be as ready as we can be. So I think that will be it for today's video. And hope you guys enjoyed the uh, little bit of fun with the chainsaws. And I really look forward to being able to upload these videos so much faster and be able to watch videos again. <laughs> I just hope it works. Okay, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you out in the trails the next time.